You eat goat for the funk, right? Well, I do. That's a t-shirt, man. You eat goat for the funk. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Ralston. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make goat leg stew. I'm not sure if to call it a stew or anything like that because I'm kind of conflicted on what to call it. It comes from my dad, but it's not the dish that my dad cooked, right? So growing up as a kid, my dad cooked a lot. I only knew him for a short period of time before he passed on, maybe about two and a half years. He was often cooking and he made this dish that I liked, but I didn't like the, the protein. He cooked with tripe. Once you cook it down, it gets really like almost like a sponge, soaks up uh, flavor, but it also imparts some funk that I love. Um, so I would eat it without the trite part. And this is how I can somehow still be close to him and remember him. This dish would be, it's perfect for the mood I'm in today. Yesterday was a uh, busy day. I have a restaurant called the Food Sermon in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Because of COVID, things have kind of died down a little bit, maybe by half. Every day it's something, you know, every entrepreneur can tell you. So yeah, I'm in a little funk, but I'm going to cook some funk now too. Like I already feel the mood changing. Yeah, let's go. So what I want is to take off a little bit of the fat. This one is really my chef's knife, but I'm gonna do some long strokes. If you're not familiar with goat, let me see. Yeah, that's goat. If you're not familiar with goat, especially the smell of it, you can get tricked at the butcher shop. They can sell you lamb as goat because they're so similar. So like, yeah, this is what I need for my goat stew. This right here. All right, so there's layers in here. Let's see if it can come apart that way. So oh, the long strokes, right? But I'm gonna do, oh, the smell. It's funky, man. It's like, <laughs> it's like a George Clinton song. So like, I'm gonna cut these in these kind of amounts here. Maybe that's what, like an inch and a half, maybe. And the reason why is that once we cook it, it's going to lose some of the loss. The yield will be just exactly what we need. There's this fat here. I'm tempted to leave it, but I won't. I'm going to, I'll take half off. Fat, it's easier to impart flavor for me when there's like a fatty liquid versus water. So this is going to be cool for us. I think this is plenty. We'll put it in our solution, which is baking soda solution. And that is going to tenderize the meat. Marinade. It's kind of like a the foundation for what we do, almost the equivalent to uh, sofrito. I'm not gonna do the full green seasoning uh, vibe here. I'm just gonna do broadleaf thyme, some Chad and Benny, culantro. It's not cilantro, it's culantro, some garlic. Also, we have what we call a sour orange. It can be used to dress meats. So you need uh, basically the juice of about two of these. I'm gonna do that now. Cut this one. Uh, I've always used this first step because I love the fragrance of it. All right, let's pulse this a little bit. I'm looking like if a spatula is just gonna show up. Oh yeah, right here. <laughs> right here, I got one right here. So I'm using like a core sea salt and this is from the grenadines and it just tastes just like the ocean. Just like the ocean uh, that I swim in as a kid, this is where the salt comes from. Put some on there and pepper. And I have a blend in here because I can never decide. And some people are partial to black pepper or white pepper. I have all of them in here. I have the red, the green, the black, the white. They're all in here. Oh, it smells. Can you smell that? I can almost smell that through the mask, yeah. Oh my God. Well, that's a bad mask, a mask. Hey. Uh. <laughs> so I'm not using any vinegar in here. The acid from the sour orange is going to work wonders in there. And then we're just gonna work it out. Massage it, give it some love. So this will marinate for minimum an hour to overnight. You know, the longer the better to a degree. This in St. Vincent is called Kalaloo. Let me cut this off. So you see the elephant ears kind of vibe. You can either break it, cut a little, and break it this way and pull that way. 
or you can just go like that and peel it like that. I cut some small, some big, some small, some big, and then the okra. I want these to be, yeah, about this big. Okra is gonna give the, the stew some body. What can you put in your food if you don't have okra? You can put anything, like string beans maybe, some kind of a peas or a bean, that works. So this is some garlic. This is taro root. We call it dasheen in the islands. The thing about these roots in the States is like, it's like sometimes like a guest thing. They travel so far, like sometimes it's good or sometimes the, this part will be good and that part will be bad. This is awesome. Look at that. Yeah. If I'm cutting this this way. Most people may use, you can use a peeler, use the whole blade. All right, here we go. You know, I kind of decide as I go, so I don't have anything pre-planned. Yeah. These are beautifully designed, right? Look at these specks there, like amber and stuff in there. The smaller ones will break up and give the soup some more body. I'm calling it a soup. Maybe it's a soup. Oh. Stew soup. Yeah, we'll see. Onions. We forgot to do the callow leaves. I roll them. So it's almost like, you know, like a chiffonade. Green onions. These green onions to garnish. Last but not least, coconut cream. So what I do, I try to cut them in a smaller portion sizes like that. So I can, I can add them in and they will melt into the stew slash soup. I think we'll decide what it is when it cooks. Now we're gonna sear the goat. I'm actually gonna use some clarified butter or like ghee. It's gonna give the dish some richness. Let's rock. There's some islands in the Caribbean that use ghee. Uh, those islands that may have like a, more of a Indian influence. And you see it's starting to brown a little bit already. You get really good caramelization on a protein that's been soaking in baking soda for the 15 minutes or more, right? Because if you come and see, like, this is 15 minutes here. That's wonderful. Hey, Bailey. Bailey. <laughs> oh. Bailey's working on what? You want to help? Huh? You want to help? And so, like, all these little bits from the seasoning and the marinade are kind of falling off into the ghee, which is great. That's what you want. That's the good stuff. All right, so I'll say, you know, about two to three minutes on each side, kind of. Depends on how far you want to go. For me, I just wanted to caramelize a little bit, not too much. I'm starting to think this is a stew. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What makes you think that? I mean, I'm getting a stew vibes. I'm getting this Maillard reaction on this, on this protein here. You know, it's starting to brown up the smell of it. Yeah, it's like a stewy. You don't you don't usually sear the protein when you're making a soup, I don't think. To do this process, you're about to make a stew. Soup, you just kind of put things in all at once and then boom, stew. You gotta stew has a little bit more like give a damn, you know? We're not gonna change the oil, we're gonna actually add the curry. So like I toast it and then I add onions. I add the onions here and just start adding all the aromatics and the flavor. But this, wow, this is beautiful. This curry though, is spicy. Right now I wanna like salt a little bit. Just a little. The thing is to like season as you go, right? Ginger, you have star anise, some clove and cinnamon. Ah, that smell. Uh, it's nothing like that combination of, uh, <laughs> it's unreal, the smell. Definitely a stew. It's official, it's a stew. Two tablespoons of brown sugar, two bay leaves, a little more, a little more ghee. By, by the time I'm done with, you know, adding ghee, I probably end up adding about, it, it pains me to say it, half a cup. That's not that bad. Half cup's not that bad. 
Now I'm adding the garlic, pepper. Last but not least, some more culantro or Chad and Benny. I mean, we use it a lot. It's like a foundational flavor for everything we do. Just added um, the rind of a sour orange, and that's to give it some freshness again, depth of flavor. And now we can re-add our goat. Yeah, that's a stew. This is a stew. We have dried chickpeas. It has like a nutty flavor. The ones in the can, if you don't get the dried ones, it works just the same. Man, I, I mean, it's ready. It's ready to eat. <laughs> when I started, I was like in a really like not so great of a mood. I'm low energy. Yeah, I'm in a little funk. But it's just like exercising or cooking or doing what you love. Like you forget all about that once you get into that exercise, right? Like I'm playing right now, this is great. The smells, the scents, it's like therapy for me. All right, so we're gonna add bone broth. And then you'll have like the residual marinade. And this will also give the stew some balance, right? Let this rock for about a good hour and a half. All right, so our goat has been simmering or stewing. Press it against the side here. Yeah, starting to have a little give. Chickpeas are perfect, but in the next 30 minutes, they'll be even better. By now, if you did can, it would have been um, uh, almost mush. So what I would suggest if you're gonna use canned, uh, you should add the chickpeas at a later time. That's yummy. So we're gonna add our coconut cream. It gives the stew a little bit more body. And then it's gonna, you see, it's gonna change the color of this. I'm gonna add in the kalu as well. It's not something where you kind of get in trouble if you overcook it, the kalaloo. It, 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 it keeps its uh, integrity. In reference to the flavor and where you want to go, you can cook this now for another 10 minutes and the kalaloo would be fine, ready to go. You can cook it for an hour or two and the kalaloo will still be okay, right? And then we add our dashin or tar root. So I think this is fine here. Man, that looks good. Let that tar root cook some more. If you can't find tar root, you can use, because it's a textural thing, you can use like a, a potato, like a Yukon Gold or something like that. It wouldn't be the same flavor, but you need something that's high in starch. Should be ready in a few. Going to like toast up some okra and then use some more of this ghee. And I just want to toast some of them. If you cook it this way, it's going to render and become, actually, and see, this is why my employees hate me sometimes, because I change the game, I change the story a lot. I'm gonna add some in here, and these are gonna get a little soft and make it more silky. These, I'm gonna toast. It'll end up being almost like a garnish, but I'll add it into the soup. So you'll have two different textures from one ingredient. Season it, some salt. You can actually bake it in the oven as well, the okra. You bake it over, you slice it down the middle, bake it in the oven, salt, pepper, and like you can have like a little dipping sauce. That would be like a chip, you know, an okra chip. Um, yeah, we're almost there. Like this, these are perfect. When I was growing up, there, there are things I didn't like, like okra. And now at my age, I like those things. It's all about connection for me. And so like I would eat something I don't like just to be connected, you know. Like I said, this was supposed to be like a, this would have been tripe in there. Um, I would eat tripe, I don't love it, but I'll eat it just to feel connected to dad or connected to where I'm from. These are gonna sit and cool. Try one. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right, so let's check it out. Oh wow, great color. Dashin is ready. Ooh. That's a stew. Oh man, I just need to put a little bit more salt in there. You taste the notes of the, um, the sour orange from the marinade, I actually taste that. And also the curry, the spice, um, the richness of the coconut milk. Yeah, it's pretty, I'm pretty pleased. This is a winner here. I'm gonna plate it. I think that's good. 
gonna garnish with the toasted okra, just for some texture here. And then also some green onions. So there you have it, goat stew with dasheen and kalaloo. I feel great. This is an ode to my pop without really cooking his recipe, but we're still connected because of the process. I actually think mine is a little better than his, to be honest. Like, I mean, I'm very pleased with this, um, but I still feel very connected to my dad here. Finishing salt maybe here, yeah, see? It has a lot of fat in here. It's gonna get soaking up. Let's see now. Yeah, night and day, it's good. Don't be afraid to salt your food. I salted the out of this, this goat, but I mean, it's good. Show me salt in a way, whatever, it needs it. <laughs> My energy is back now that we're done. <laughs>